So some of the things that you uh, inquired about that I want to address, um, some of you talked about cost of college tuition, scholarships. Um, I know it's going up considerably, whether it's in-state at CU, which raised their tuition considerably, um, or the uh, higher education costs across the country all going up. Um, we obviously don't directly control that from the federal government side, but what we do uh, control is the student loan program and the Pell Grant program. So. Pell Grants you're eligible for only if your family's below certain income levels and they help uh, people be able to afford to go to college. Uh, student loans are available to people uh, of very different income levels and I encourage people to take advantage of them because it's a lower interest way of financing your education. And it also has uh, some favorable provisions on how you pay those back, like let's say you graduate college and you go to work for nonprofits or the community, only a certain percentage of your income is necessary to pay back those loans. So um, it's a pretty favorable way to, to finance a college education. And a college education, as you all probably know, is very much worth it. Um, you earn um, well over a million dollars more over the course of your life if you have a college degree than if you don't have a college degree. So is it worth you know, $200,000, yeah, it is. It's, you know, it's, it, there's ways to do it for less, but at the end of the day, you know, if you spend $200,000 and you gain a million dollars, that's a good investment. Um, it's a great, uh, and incre increasingly in this global economy, for Americans to be able to support themselves, middle class lifestyle, you need a college education even more than ever, because those are the kinds of jobs we have. It used to be, uh, you know, in the 1950s and 60s that you could do well in this country with just a high school diploma. You could get a good manufacturing job. You know, you could make a uh, good living and, and get good retirement benefits. There's still a few of those because obviously not everybody goes to college, but there's less and less of those. A lot of the growth jobs require additional education and being able to afford college is an important part of that. Some of you asked about alternative energy, clean energy, global warming. Um, this is an area where I've been very frustrated that Congress has done very little on. Um, the House of Representatives that I serve in did pass a bill last year called cap and trade that would have actually put a cap on our carbon emissions, but it didn't pass the Senate. And you know for a bill to become law, it has to pass the House, it has to pass the Senate, and what's the third thing that has to happen? Sorry. That's right, signed by the president. So three things have to happen. Um, so we only got through one of those things uh, with the cap and trade bill, unfortunately. Um, obviously, global warming needs to be addressed internationally as well. <clears throat> and we need to work with other countries to reduce their carbon emission profile. America should lead the way, though. We shouldn't be behind. Much as Boulder County leads the way. Boulder City and Boulder County are doing a lot um, to, uh, to uh, reduce their, their carbon footprint. It would be great to see the rest of the country doing a lot of that as well. Um, some of you asked about uh, medical marijuana and drugs. Um, I've generally been supportive of what Colorado is doing um, in terms of allowing medical marijuana to exist and not having it all in the black market. Um, I do think it should be up to states and cities. So I mean, some cities will ban it and that's fine and some states don't have it. But the federal government should not be really interfering with what the states are doing, um, in my opinion. But would love to hear your, your feedback on that because one of the arguments that people say against it is they, they say, well, if you have it available, it'll lead to more you know, kids using it. Um, and, I, and so I would ask you, does medical marijuana make it easier or harder or the same for young people to get? Uh, it's obviously, you can't, you're, it's illegal to get medical marijuana uh, unless you have a prescription. But, but what are the kind of, how does that affect abuse of marijuana would be my question <clears throat> as well. Um, some of you asked about uh, health care. Um, I, I think one of uh, I responded to some of those letters, but a lot of the health care reform efforts that passed last year go into effect in 2014. So there's this long lag effect. Because remember you all, remember this health care debate, and everybody was talking about debating health care, should we pass it, should we not? Um, and then uh, it did pass, but the, the reason you haven't heard about it much is it hasn't gone into effect yet. It goes into effect in 2014, most of the provisions. And that's when uh, you, you, can, you can't be dropped for coverage because of pre-existing conditions. That's when the health exchanges are set up. That's when a lot of these changes happen. In the meantime, there's challenges to this health care law that are going through the courts, uh, which will probably uh, not succeed. So the health care policy will probably be implemented. But um, every law gets to be challenged on constitutionality grounds because there's three branches of government, uh, legislative, executive, and of course, judiciary. And judiciary uh, gets the final say on whether it's constitutional or not. Some of you asked about immigration and also uh, DREAM Act and, and, and how undocumented kids can afford college. And this is a very frustrating area as well because it's really tough for, um, 
kids who uh, don't have the right documentation, and usually it's not their fault. It's uh, you know it's their parents' fault, and you can obviously find blame with somebody, but it's not your fault if you grew up and uh, you did everything right and you played by the rules, but you just don't have the right paperwork, and as a result, you'd actually have to pay out-of-state tuition to go to CU, which is cost a fortune. I mean, it's I don't know thirty thousand, twenty-five thousand dollars a year. It's very expensive, uh, and, and beyond the price range of most people. Um, so we're trying to pass a bill here in Colorado that would allow in-state tuition uh, for all residents. But also nationally, we want to pass the DREAM Act, which would give a pathway to citizenship for young people who grew up here, um, who I often refer to as de facto Americans. That, mean that means they're Americans in fact, if not in, 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 in law, uh, because they're as American as anybody else, and some of your classmates here probably uh, meet, those, uh, meet that criteria. Some of you asked about um, gay rights and uh, LGBT issues. Um, and, and actually, uh, some of you had mentioned that it's uh, tough here at Fairview sometimes to be gay. Um, you know, it's I, I, I was just fun. Obviously, growing up in general is tough. There's whether you're straight or gay. There's a lot of drama in high school and a lot of stress, and everything seems larger than life. And uh, as you grow up, you'll kind of viewing high school through the rearview mirror. You'll kind of put it more in perspective. But yeah, you know, it, it can be tough. And when you have incidences, obviously, if anybody, if you see anybody being discriminated against because they're gay or lesbian, um, you should definitely, uh, you know, report that to the uh, faculty or administration here because um, there are non-discrimination policies in the school district. And um, the school district is very interested in doing more to prevent bullying. I'm sponsoring a bill nationally called the Student Non-Discrimination Act because not all school districts have non-discrimination policies and this would basically try to do this nationally to make sure that gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender students aren't discriminated against anywhere in the country. Um, so with that, I just would love to hear what else is on your minds. I mean, there's a number of other issues you raised, but um, you know, I'm mostly here to listen.